The 2020 Consumer Electronics Show has brought lots of new innovation and tech to the market and has forecasted some impressive new pieces of technology that you can implement in your business. So join us this week where we talk about all of the real estate and business tech that you're going to get that comes from CES 2020. So once again, strap in. We're going back to the future again. Welcome back to Talking Real, brought to you by the Oklahoma Association of Realtors. This is episode 105 of Talking Real, and you're back in the studio with Jeff and Nabil. Nabil, how's your day going? Fantastic. It's the first Monday of the month when we're recording this. Yeah. Just had a little Super Bowl action, so congratulations to all the Kansas City Chiefs fans. Yeah. You know, I'm sad I missed all the ads. Yeah, because I was driving back at that the time Super Bowl is happening, so I'm gonna have to wait until people release there. And some of them already have their yeah. top ten yeah. and most watched ads and stuff like that. So My favorite was definitely the Bill Murray Groundhog Day Jeep uh, Jeep Challenge I did, I did, or whatever that I did called. actually watch that because I think I, ca- I caught the last eight minutes yeah. of Q4. Yeah, which was probably the most exciting. That's a great part of the game. <laughs> That's a great part of the game. So it was a good Super Bowl. I didn't start paying much attention to the second half but uh yeah i thought it was a great super bowl and so congratulations to all the fans out there i know in oklahoma because we don't have an nfl team here a lot of fans do kind of end up being chiefs fans so we have a lot of chiefs fans locally because mm-hmm. they're kind of a close team yeah so congratulations to all those folks i have yeah. some friends from college who are like the biggest chiefs fans ever and so i was real happy for them it was their first one in like 50, 50 years. years yeah 50 that's, years yeah it's a long drought should be good mm-hmm. for them so um other stuff coming up we still have capital conference right around the corner and it's not too late to to get signed up for that just a month away now yes and you can get more information on that at okrealtors.com forward slash capital conference yes check out the schedule there's a lot of legislative advocacy learning and um, a lot of hey why is this important and why you should really be invested in this yeah for sure it'll be a good one so check that out it's free to sign up so head on over there and get signed up for that Mm -hmm. also nar region 9 that's the number 9.com you can head on over there and get signed up for our region 9 conferences coming up which is our conference and networking and uh you know some association business stuff that you may be interested in that's going to be going on here in oklahoma city with realtors from uh, missouri arkansas kansas and oklahoma so we got the whole region coming in a lot of people from NAR leadership coming in. Mm-hmm. So come check that out too. We're going to have a good time with that one and I'm looking forward to it. So that's later on in March. Yeah, that's going to be a good one too. Yeah. Anything else exciting going on in your world, Nabil? My world is always <laughs> exciting. <laughs> Can people go to nabilconference.com and get signed up for your conference coming up? <laughs> no? okay. I wonder what my conference would be like. <laughs> <laughs> We'd have a good time. But we'll plan that for 2021. All right. <laughs> so this week we, last week we talked about new smart home tech that came out of CES 2020, which is Consumer Electronics Show. Mm -hmm. And we told you that we want to talk about the smart home stuff because we obviously had a full episode worth of that and hope you found some cool stuff there that you liked. Yeah. But there's also some relevant new stuff and innovation coming out of CES that is more business oriented that may help impact your business and give you some new tools, more efficient tools, those kinds of things. Uh, You know, technology always is rapidly expanding Mm -hmm. and a lot of new things coming and so we have a few trends on this one too yeah Uh, but yeah i wanted to talk to you about all the cool stuff to outfit your brokerage from ces that that's coming out some of the new tech that's on the horizon or that may be available right now yeah and there's there's some cool stuff and there's a little bit of overlap which we'll talk about because obviously tech for business and tech for home can overlap in some aspects but uh this one i mean it had some really cool stuff yeah it's like this is stuff that I'm like, man, if if this comes in because a lot of the release dates for the first few things that we're going to talk about are mid 2020 um, and some of them have no release date yet. So they're, you know, they obviously want to make sure the tech is good enough to put out right. in the market. Yeah. So I think the underpinning that's really going to change things and I think 
just broadly for business and life and everything is 5G, right? This is sort of the thing that people are talking about right now is the launch of 5G. And we've had some launching of that in certain markets. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think it's available here in Oklahoma City. If you've got a newer device that supports 5G, you can actually get, I don't know if it's like fully amped up 5G, but it's definitely that next generation of, uh, you know, over the air data. Yeah. See, I don't know. I'm not completely enthralled by it because I remember when 4G was being rolled out and then 4G LTE and it, it was awesome. Don't get me wrong. It was really cool. But when everyone got on that network, it slowed down from its initial test speeds and everything that was promised. And it was still faster than what 3G was, obviously. Uh, but I don't know if it's going to be all that and a bag of chips. See, I kind of am going to take a little bit different stance. Okay. I think I disagree because, again, with the the way that we've changed this technology to where understanding that you're going to have to essentially be able to support every single human <laughs> connecting to it with one or more <laughs> devices yeah. and definitely more devices. Yeah. I think preparing for that scalability of it. And I mean, you're talking we're speeds of 100 times faster than what we're dealing with now. So if you're hooked directly into you know, your fiber optic cable in your home, the kind of speed you can get. I mean, it's, we're almost moving beyond the speeds that we can actually utilize right now for most things. It, yeah. But it creates the capacity to be able to do things like having, this is not necessarily real estate. Well, maybe it is. Uh, but like, you know, having the autonomous vehicles and things like that, like this is what we have to have to be able to support that. Okay. So I do agree with that. Like that potential is, fascinating and i'm sure there's going to be some upgrades to this 5g network before it even reaches that full potential right uh but for the things we have right now yeah f i don't think 5g is going to be like all of a sudden you're going to be like oh my gosh my work is so much faster yes i think that you're right uh, what i don't think it's necessarily going to do is that just okay so you're now able to stream 4k video to your phone as opposed to <laughs> you know whatever instantaneously yeah. from anywhere right it, that's not necessarily going to I think drastically change, but I think it's all the other innovation that comes around and right. what, what apps are going to be able to do, how quickly you're going to be able to, um, and it's not necessarily even a speed thing, but it's more the ability to transfer large amounts of data relatively quickly. Mm -hmm. And those kinds of things that are going to be really important. Yeah. I think plus having all like last week we talked about with the smart home stuff, all the stuff we can now connect for various purposes. That's what we're going to be getting into with just even more stuff yeah. and what that's going to look like having this just broad connectivity. And I think it's going to be fascinating. I think this is kind of a, a game changer. I feel like I'm on a super devil's advocate stand <laughs> right now. Because <laughs> there is a downside to that capacity as well, right? Because it makes things become bigger. So like if you notice, even in our computers right now, we have 16, 32, however amount of gigs of RAM, but you're still running into that problem of running out of memory or things not working well. That's because everything else then is like, oh, I have this much more space to use. My software is going to work fine. And then when you add everything up, it ends back up where it was. Well, and I think this is where <laughs> the 5G changes that because it's, it's got going, more capacity. Well, and you're moving away from having to store things locally because you can access them and stream them instantaneously. Right. So now you're just going to have the ex this expansion of, of cloud-based servers. And so you don't actually have to download apps anymore, right? That's like the future is not having to download apps. It's that you like download the icon, but you're streaming it instantaneously mm, from, yeah. from wherever you're getting it. That was part of my phone that I got like three years ago was it was offloading all my app settings to then pull it back whenever I needed it. Exactly. And so, yeah, that that is kind of cool. Yeah. So all that cloud connectivity, everything else, that's what's going to, I think, change things. And, and we're going to see some real interesting changes over the next decade or so, I believe. Okay. So that ends our 5G portion of this conversation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was an unplanned little 5G debate. That was fun. So, but again, as we talk about what 5G can do and, and the bottom line is technology is not going anywhere and, mm -hmm. and it's only going to get better. Exactly. Right. And we want to start off by talking about kind of another new thing is this bendable tech. And we've been seeing this for a couple of years and I think it started out with really smartphones was sort of the first iteration we were seeing. And mostly just prototypes, right. people being like, Hey, this is cool. Look what tech can do. Right. But it wasn't refined enough or tested enough to release out into the market. Yes. But now it is. Yeah. 
we're starting to see some actual releases on the horizon, specific time periods, those kinds of things. Mm-hmm. Um, just the other day, we were looking at the Motorola Razor is yes. coming back. Yes. That was my favorite phone, the flip phone. But this time, you flip it open, and the entire thing is a screen. It's a flippable smartphone. Yes. Like, S- yeah. It is, like, when you flip it open, it's like a phone you use right now. But when you close it, it's a flip phone. Right. It's going to be fantastic. And it has that look of the old school Motorola Razors. Uh-huh. Just, you know, I, I thought it was great. Uh, but what we're talking about here is laptops as well. Mm-hmm. And I think this is kind of cool. So the the first one that has an actual release date that's going to be mid-2020 is from Lenovo, who is a Realtor Benefits partner. Worth noting, you can actually get pretty big discounts if you uh, go through NAR and you buy your Lenovo laptop or mm-hmm. other Lenovo accessories. But um, they're ready to launch the world's first laptop with a foldable screen. It's the ThinkPad X1 Fold. And it's got a 13.3 inch screen that bends inward to snap shut magnetically. And it it's sort of like, imagine a large iPad, the big ones that mm-hmm. you can fold in half. Right, think about what that's gonna do to your uh, portability and just being able to carry these things around. Now you're, Essentially, your laptop or your iPad is half the size. Right, right. Yeah, I think this is cool. Now, the weird thing is that, okay, so it's a, it's basically a tablet it's that a, you can yeah, fold in half. So imagine more like a Microsoft Surface probably than mm-hmm. an iPad in a lot of ways. Anyway, um, but then it has a magnetic uh, keyboard that you can attach to it if you want a real keyboard. Or you kind of fold it in half like a laptop and it's got a... So it's like a half keyboard, half screen. Yeah, sort of like a digital one. Or you can have two different apps going on the bottom one and the top one, and it's all touchscreen. So like, and now the idea of a screen-based uh, laptop is not great, right? If you have a keyboard, if you've typed yeah. on just a, mm-hmm. an iPad before, it's not having that feedback. It's not real smooth or anything, but it'll get right. you by if you need it. Yes. Uh, but I think the cool thing here is just the flexibility that this is going to offer. <laughs> flexibility. <laughs> no pun intended, but the, you know, the, just the innovation here, you know, I don't know that it's that novel that it's going to change anything, but it's kind of cool. It it's is. pretty neat. I, I, I'm excited that this is finally out to the public. Right. Right. So the next one kind of going along with the same thing is the Ori, mm-hmm. uh, which is short for origami. I like it. And I, I, I kind of like that name a lot. Yeah. And that's from Dell, who is also a Realtor Benefits partner. Right. So uh, check out the discounts that are available there. And this is another uh, 13.4-inch laptop with a screen that can fold 90 degrees and operate like two screens on one device. So that's kind of cool because you can have it like sitting up. Right. Two screens. Like a book uh, or something. Yeah. And, uh, and this kind of exactly what you're talking about. Half can be used as a monitor and the other half is a keyboard if you don't have a keyboard and you're in a pinch but you know that and this doesn't have a release date yet right this one doesn't either Mm -hmm. um they also showed intel's horseshoe bend which is a prototype 17.3 inch foldable tablet pc so again that's gonna be huge huge. um this one i'm kind of saying half yeah yeah this one they're saying don't look forward to this anytime soon necessarily (laughs) like this is still just prototype (laughs) this is a technology we're working with i mean intel doesn't really even make computers so right um but again just showing what we can do with this technology so Mm -hmm. um, again i think the foldable tech is finally like 2020s that year that it's actually going to be coming to market they've made the screens and everything else we'll see i mean you know again you can quality test these things all you want but put them in the hands of consumers and they'll find a way to break them so i and i um, think the razor is still not out yet right it comes out later this month i think that's correct um so that'll be the first real test of mass consumers with foldable screens and let's let's just mention it comes at a premium it does Right. Absolutely. The Razer is probably the most expensive phone on the market it's right like now. It's like a $1,500 phone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then that Lenovo uh, ThinkPad X1 Fold. That's These names are going to get more complicated. <laughs> 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 uh, is that a $2,500 price tag? Yeah. So, so it's not a cheap tech that you're going to get your hands on, but it's cool. Sure. Yeah, um, I think it's exciting. And it's funny because I'm now using a MacBook and as are you <laughs> and most of us in our office are and like we don't even have touch screens on Macs yet. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know, maybe Apple's smarter and thinking, you know, let's not get too crazy yet or we'll see. I, I wonder know. what has stopped that. Well, because they, they want the people to buy their iPads. Uh, fair point. Right? Yeah. The iPads would go away if they just made these touch screens because these are almost as small as an iPad. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps. 
So we wanted to cover a few productivity tools as well. Um, really, we just see a lot of improvement in the voice assistants. Mm -hmm. So we're talking your Amazon Alexa and the Google Assistant, particularly all the ones now that have screens on them. So, for example, the, the Google Nest Hub, <laughs> to think about it, and the <laughs> Nest Hub Max, which is the big one. That's what we have at home are the hubs. We like those. Um, but they're just expanding the things they can do. And also, they were created more for home, and they are now expanding them so just new features to be able to use them in the office right. as well. And new skills. And they're yeah. learning and growing as this thing grows. Yeah. One thing I think is cool is the, uh, the, the Google one, they announced that they have the ability to leave a digital post-it note through its note skill. I kind of like that. I, I do too. Yeah. I mean, it just kind of neat. It says you can say, hey, Google, leave a note. I'm out of showing for example. And so if that's like sitting on your desk facing outward, then if somebody walks in, they can, they'll can they just see the post-it note on the screen that says, I'm out of showing or whatever the note right. is. That and you they write. don't have to like look at your calendar and try to figure out where you are. You could even put in the address there. Exactly. Like, you know, I'm out of showing at XYZ place and, you know, people know where you are. That's an interesting idea. So, hey, two birds, one stone. Yeah, I like that. So uh, that's kind of cool that they're just expanding that. You're going to find new ways to use those for business. Mm -hmm. um, Google also announced that it's expanding its read aloud feature in Google Assistant to where it could just do more complicated things. So, um, for example, you may have a long article or an email or other contents where you can say, hey, Google, read this page to me and it will read it out loud to you as that's well cool. as translate messages into 42 different languages. Just crazy. That yeah, and you see that on your computers right now, where if it detects a different language, you can just say translate page, and it translates the whole page for you. Not one hundred percent accurate, right? But it still get, it gets you by, right? And uh, this read aloud thing is really cool because you could be multitasking. It could be reading you an email or something else, especially in your car, right? You know, you can have you can still interact with your emails and messages more robustly for sure than you would have before yep absolutely and anything to keep us from using our phones while driving mm -hmm. is good uh the next cool thing i mean this is kind of going back on speed right um is about routers and having undeterred internet throughout your whole office or your home right and uh the new routers that have come out you know last year a couple of years ago the wi-fi six yes uh those are super pricey and, you know, you'd be thinking, eh, is this worth it? Is this not? But now those prices have been coming down Drastically. significantly. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so Netgear's Nighthawk mesh includes two Wi-Fi, six routers at $230. Right. And, and that's so you, for the package of two. That's for a package of two. So you can be, you can rest assured that like uh, a 3,000 square foot office building would be fully covered with this mesh router system operating at 1.8 gigabits of bandwidth. That's insane. That's a lot of speed. Yeah, this is gonna support, so, you know, an example, right? So in our house, our Cox Wi-Fi, right? We may pay for 150 megabits per second speed, but if you use their router, their built-in modem router, you're gonna max out at like 50, 60, 70 megabits per second over Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. We got the Google Wi-Fi mesh system, the Google Home mesh system, and that was able to increase our speeds up to 130 megabits per second by just changing from the built-in, just mediocre system to the Google Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. This you're talking, right, in your house, you can get up to meg you know one gigabit speed. Like gigablast and stuff like that. Right, where you get that maximum speed. But the problem has always been over Wi-Fi, it's a limiting speed. So you're right. always going to be limited no matter how much you're paying your service provider for. The Wi-Fi system has to keep up. And these are these like top of the line that can exceed most of what you're going to be getting mm -hmm. um, over the air, which is just crazy that you can get that kind of speed over Wi-Fi now, which again, just makes everything more mobile, easier to use. You don't have those, those weird issues right. where they uh, slow down and Things aren't moving fast. Yeah, most of the time your limiting factor is either your modem or your router. Right. Uh, it's not necessarily the speed that you're getting from Cox or AT and T. It's the tech that you have at home. Exactly. And so this this will fix that. And I mean, there are other options too, like D-Link's Smart AX fifteen hundred mesh is one point five gigabits per second. Right. Right. And uh, it's one hundred twenty bucks. Yeah, that's cheap. One hundred twenty bucks. Yeah. 
Uh, TP-Link also has their Deco Mesh Wi-Fi 6 systems. And again, it's a two-pack starting at $270. That's very affordable for this top-of-the-line technology. Mm -hmm. And these meshes are cool. And if you don't know what those are, uh, instead of just having one router, you have you know, one base router and then another uh, external and orbiting router. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. A satellite router. Yeah, basically. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that is feeding off of that main one, but it's essentially just expanding your network. Right. So it's cool if you have like dead areas in your house or your office, you can put another uh, little node there and it just uh, creates a whole new area yeah. full of Wi-Fi. Bottom line goodness. is if you don't, if you're having dead spots in your house because you've got uh, you know, uh, upstairs, downstairs, or it's large floor plan like spread corner out. Corner office, right? Yeah. If you're having dead spots in an area, you got to look into one of these mesh systems. And when you're doing it, might as well get one of these new top of the line Wi-Fi six ones. That's right, and be future proofed a little bit. Yep. Uh, this next thing is ultra mobile laptops and two in ones. We talked about the foldable stuff, but even outside of the fold foldable stuff, we are having some just rapid increase in what they're doing with laptops that mm -hmm. I think is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, Dell's got the Latitude 9510 that they're releasing in March, and they're billing this as the world's lightest business laptop at 3.2 pounds. Now, you might think laptops of this kind would be like an 11-inch laptop. That's nothing. This is a 15-inch display laptop. So it's a large screen laptop. And again, 3.2 pounds, which is insanely light mm -hmm. it has built-in 5g connectivity so we talked about that and you can decide you whether go. you agree with nabil or i well i'm not saying <laughs> it's not just, useful i'm just kidding <laughs> um so but built you can in watch 5G, 4k video easy right but with 5g if you think about it right you never have to worry about like oh i gotta go get wi-fi somewhere mm -hmm. this is great for realtors who are out in the field all the time true you can draw up a contract right there on the spot 5g connectivity in your car that's going to make things super easy. That, I think that's really cool. Absolutely. Um, and on top of that, I mean, this is a high end featured equipment, 16 gigs RAM, a terabyte of storage. Um, it's two in one tablet laptop. It also features battery performance that is capable of a 30 hour runtime on one charge. That's pretty impressive. Right. 15 I mean, inches with those specs for 30 hours. Yeah. And, and, and it's getting 5G. So that connectivity is also, you know, Instant, like it's yeah. like your phone, it's draining battery. But that's awesome that they got 30 hours out of yep. that. Instantaneously everywhere. I think this is so cool. This is definitely where laptops are going. Um, and again, it's premium at $1,800, but that's not outrageous for, for what that is. I mean, that's, that's pretty crazy. So we've definitely seen some rapid improvements in laptops. So if you're in the market for a laptop, you know, maybe wait a few months and see what's coming out in these new business oriented laptops. Cause again, here in our office, everybody's on a laptop. We don't even have desktops anymore. Yeah. Most people don't like, they're just moving to this where people are using laptops. And so, um, definitely check that out. What's coming out in that market. Cause I'm excited about, I'm such a geek about this. I love mm -hmm. it. I know. Yeah. You can tell from our conversation. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, so the next cool innovation that we saw and that we've already talked about a little bit are some safety gadgets. Yeah. And one of those ones was a smart lock that you can now use on everything. Right. So your cabinets, your files, anything. So, and we talked about this, the Yale smart cabinet lock. Right. So we won't go too far into this. Uh, so if you want to know more about this, jump to the previous episode, episode 104, and listen about this but essentially you can turn any drawer any storage into a smart lock yeah which is cool the other cool thing in this data security safety gadgets is the vast omni it was a it was an honoree for the award and i, I love this because you can plug this in to any connected devices and it tells you about suspicious activity on your network yeah yeah, that is so is cool. cool. So you don't need an IT background. You don't need to know how to spot suspicious malware or any like attempts at your firewall or anything like that. This will tell you that, hey, we got the, we saw this. Check it out. Right. It's really cool. And this is cool because we do have so many things. I mean, again, this will plug directly into your router. You can see, um, you know, automatically identify and block suspicious malware. One of the big areas where we've seen this is all these connected devices because they're not putting in... I think they're starting to, but in the early days of the internet of things there, they were not putting in the proper security. So right. there were open ports, things like that, that hackers could utilize your smart home tech 
for various purpose, nefarious purposes, exactly. or it would create a backdoor into your router, those kinds of things. So um, this will help plug some of those holes that if you're not real sure if that light switch, for example, is being used for something, <laughs> it's, it's weird to think that you could do that, but that's exactly what happened. Uh-huh. There was a, um, a couple of like huge denial of service attacks where that's what they did. They like programmed this uh, script basically to take over all these loosely secure Internet of Things devices and made them taken down. I think it was almost like the entire West Coast uh, a couple of years ago. Really? I don't know if you remember that. Yeah. Um, and it was all I done. Re- I don't remember this. Yeah. And it's all done based off of using these Internet of Things devices. So that's a pretty cool thing. Um, definitely good for the office as well in an age and era where we're so concerned about, um, you know, the security of your systems and mm-hmm. and you know, we've, we've seen the wire fraud stuff going on. And yeah. so definitely check out Avast. They have a, this is like the company that also does software for virus protection, those kinds of things, mm-hmm. but they've got some of these more um, hardware devices as well. So check out Avast and they've got prices starting at $20 for some of these solutions that'll help protect your system. Right. Yeah. That, that was really exciting. That yeah. was cool. I might get one for home. There you go. I mean, might as well. Might as well. Can't be too safe, right? M- nope. <laughs> Not today. Not tomorrow. Uh, Facebook. This is interesting. Facebook has actually um, went to CES and updated their privacy checkup tool. And it's actually the first major update to its privacy tool since it was created in 2014, (laughs) which is like six years ago. I know. Crazy. (laughs) Um, So it offers a central tab to change settings, seeing who can uh, see your profile and send you friend requests, as well as enabling login alerts. So you can see if somebody else logs in on your account. Uh, review permission settings for third-party apps, which was a big one where people are stealing your data by, because yep. you approve, you know, Candy Crush clone or whatever. To be able to to, take everything from you. Exactly. Yeah. So check out Facebook's new privacy tool. I think that you should probably, I think it's something we should do every year, do a little privacy audit on social media mm-hmm. and make sure that you haven't authorized things and that kind of stuff. So check that out because they've updated it for the first time in six years. Right. And so this, like a few other things, uh, is not necessarily something that's new right because facebook had privacy tools that you could get to and you could do all these things if you dug far deep into it yeah like you could get to all these settings and they're just making it more accessible because it's so much more prevalent yeah yeah and it's about time Yes, I agree. <laughs> um, a couple other quick things we wanted to bring up that were pretty cool uh, they've got this new security camera thing that is a it's a, it's a security a, camera yeah it's hard thing. to describe it's weird it's a smart home security device that what this does is it's a an over the door camera yeah it's by bodyguards guards with a z and they it's basically like a digital peephole it has a camera that slips over the top of the door on this metal bracket um, one side has a wide angle camera that captures what's happening outside the other side has an lcd display with a live feed so you can see what's going on on the other side of the door. And then it also has a camera pointed inside for dual recording. So you can see what's going on inside as well. It's got a microphone for two-way communication and it's got cloud-based storage that you can uh, access via smartphone app, those kinds of things. So this is pretty cool, Mm -hmm. I think. Um, It's $280, it is available now. Again, it's bodyguards. And I think this is kind of a cool device for almost like a temporary solution too. Like you want to have a something that's that you're not installing with screws and that kind of thing right. uh, for showings or whatever the case is. This is kind of a cool device to be able to to have that if there's something that you want a little extra security or at the office, something yeah. like that. Yeah, this kind of reminds me about the smart lock situation right. where they're turning everything into a smart lock capable drawer right. or cabinet. And so this is essentially turning all your doors, you know, instead of having to install a ring anywhere, like one in the front, one in the back, or like you're saying, showing specially, you just slip this on and you take this off and go wherever else you need to go. Yeah. I think Pretty that's cool. really cool. Yep. Uh, the next one's also with a camera. Uh, it is Arlo Pro, Arlo's Pro 3, and it's the first wire-free floodlight camera. Yeah. And uh, that's really cool. And it's got night vision and the ability to zoom in and record record footage or you can view it live you can mount it anywhere and move it as needed it's battery powered lasts up to six months on one charge yeah that's pretty that's pretty that's impressive cool. yeah that's pretty impressive so and arlo makes good stuff we have mm-hmm. arlo cameras um that are really nice and so uh really cool again it's got a built-in siren two-way audio to speak with somebody if you see them so kind of a cool little device yeah and, and it comes out later yeah. this year yep so check that out mm-hmm 
Uh, I mean, that's pretty much going to wrap it up. We're about out of time here. There's definitely some other crazy stuff that you've seen at CES. Uh, artificial intelligence and... Artificial uh, humans. Artificial humans. <laughs> uh, the... What is it? The... Uh, um, AR. AR. The... Yeah, the augmented reality augmented reality uh with like google glass and stuff so i think that's going to make a comeback in like the next couple of years yeah the wearable tech that you yeah. like the glasses where you can have your little heads up display i know they were talking about lenses a little while ago yeah and so i it'll be interesting because if you if you remember foldable screens were talked about years ago yeah right and that, it kind of reminds me of how they were talking about augmented reality years ago and now foldable screens are are here right and so i wonder if in the next year or two we're going to see augmented reality really make a push for it well we've been seeing a lot more particularly just like iphone games and things like uh -huh. that and uh, even some stuff in the real estate industry where you can like put an ar couch in an empty room yeah. those kinds of things so we're starting to see that come to fruition a little bit it's starting to develop and i think we're going to keep seeing some more of the augmented reality come up as a new thing as well so yeah. um, lots of crazy stuff going on out there again we are rapidly improving and increasing in our technology capabilities powered by 5g <laughs> <laughs> with a wi-fi router near you yeah. <laughs> so we appreciate you coming in again you know we love to talk about tech stuff here so having two weeks to talk about all the cool new tech that came out of ces really got nabil and i excited um we're gonna get into some weeds i think next week mm -hmm. is the plan um, the uh, HUD released some new guidelines on uh, emotional support animals that are going to be very helpful for anybody that deals with any property management of any kind and emotional support animals. They finally have given us some new guidance. So take a look at that if you're in that field and then come back next week because we're going to get into the weeds on what that means and what that looks like for everybody uh, that we finally have a little bit of extra guidance on it. Now, would that include the pet we talked about last week <laughs> well since that's not actually even an animal <laughs> fake pets that's the next thing <laughs> my emotional support robot that, that's essentially that's, what, that's it what it was yep. so, yeah uh so again thanks for coming and joining us on talking real this week for episode 105 we look forward to having you back next tuesday as well and if you haven't done so yet hit that subscribe button so you know when the next episode comes out every tuesday if you're wondering <laughs> <laughs> and share this podcast with a friend or a fellow real estate enthusiast and uh, spread the love of Talking Real. Absolutely. So until next time, we'll see you next Tuesday on Talking Real. Talking Real.